from AG Web, uh, agweb.com, Farm Journal. Government cameras hidden on private property. Welcome to Open Fields. <laughs> Now, if you're paying attention to the news in general, this really shouldn't surprise you, because if you recall, we brought you the story just a few weeks ago where the federal government, through its wildlife management, whatever, is actually putting poison traps for wolves on people's private property. And and we brought you the tragic story of a child who was permanently maimed uh, by such a device because their dog stepped on it while they were walking through the woods. And of course, the dog died. And yeah, same as with cops, you know, shoot the dog. Well, even when it's a passive automatic device that releases poison, dog died, kid permanently maimed. So this is actually another scary example of the government not respecting private property. Another reason why I want to build a wall here in my homestead. And you think that you think I'm being paranoid. You won't after you hear this. <clears throat> Seated at his kitchen table, finishing off the remains of a Saturday breakfast. Hunter Hollingsworth's world was rocked by footsteps on his front porch and pounding at the door, punctuated by an aggressive order, open up or we'll kick the door down. Surrounded on all sides of his house and the driveway block, Hollingsworth was the target of approximately 10 federal and state wildlife officials packing pistols, shotguns, and rifles. And what was Hollingsworth's crime? Drugs, armed robbery, assault, money laundering? Not quite. Months prior, in 2018, the Tennessee landowner removed a game camera secretly strapped to a tree on his private land by wildlife officials in order to monitor his activity without apparent sanction or probable cause. Repeat, Hollingsworth residence was searched by U.S. government and state officials dressed to the nines in assault gear seeking to regain possession of a trail camera the precise camera they had surreptitiously placed on his private acreage after sneaking onto his property at night, loading the camera with active SD and SIM cards and zip tying the device roughly 10 feet high up a tree, all without a warrant. These people shouldn't all just be fired. They should go to jail. Everybody involved in this should go to jail. First of all, violating private property spine and then the home invasion and assault of of, of, of all just this privacy it, it's it's insane welcome to modern america can the government place cameras and modern equipment on a private citizen's land at will or conduct surveillance and stakeouts on private land without probable cause or a search warrant indeed according to the u.s supreme court's interpretation of the fourth amendment welcome to open fields The vast majority of Americans assume law enforcement needs a warrant to carry out surveillance. But for roughly a century, SCOTUS has ruled that private land is not private. Fourth Amendment protections against unreasonable searches and seizures expressed in the Bill of Rights only apply to an individual's immediate dwelling area, according to SCOTUS. However, SCOTUS Open Fields Doctrine has been bucked in Mississippi, Montana, New York, Oregon, and Vermont through protections granted by state constitutions and for many American landowners, the more they discover about open fields, the more questions they have regarding the bounds of government power. So you better sleep on the ground. You wanna keep your property safe. You got 10 acres like me, you sleep on the ground, the whole thing's a dwelling space, right? No, they're still gonna find a way to fuck you over. In Tennessee, Hollingsworth and Terry Rainwaters, another landowner who discovered multiple trail cameras on his property placed by the state, are taking their cases to state court claiming violations of the Tennessee state constitution. The rainwaters and Hollingsworth stories contain alarming claims regarding the behavior of wildlife officials and raise a bevy of questions over open fields, states' rights, and the sanctity of private property. The next section, legal stalking. Yeah, that's what it is, legal stalking. I'm not going to get into this whole story. I'm just going to get more and more offended if I read this. But you, you just thinking about this raid, like what is the cost? They, they don't tell you the cost of that. You know, I don't mean the cost just to the government, but, you know, of all the, he's lucky someone didn't get shot by accident. Because when, when, when government agents, when the goon squads come, dogs get shot, people get shot because they go in with this uh, assumption of criminality that you're, you're a murderer who has to be stopped. So just this, this open fields concept, um, it, it really is disturbing. So this is from 1924. Hester versus the United States set up the open fields framework 
and said the U.S. Constitution does not extend to most land. What? The special protection accorded by the Fourth Amendment to the people in their persons, houses, papers, and effects is not extended to the open field. Significantly, open fields is translated beyond its literal sense and basically is defined as general acreage, woods, fields, farmlands, barren ground, and more. So it's like, hey, we're going to respect your rights, except in 90% of the world, 99% of situations, no, your rights don't apply. And, and even where we say they do, if there's some overlap because there's a camera missing, we're just going to ignore that you're, you have privacy in your own home and we'll have a home invasion with a goon squad on you as well. In 1984, SCOTUS gave additional strength to open fields in all versus the United States open fields. Do not provide the setting for those intimate activities that the amendment is intended to shelter from government interference or surveillance. There is no societal interest in protecting the privacy of those activities, such as the cultivation of crops that occur in open fields. I mean, the, the more you get into this, the more disturbing it gets as to what they're doing. So you can see um, in, in, in the story the TWRA um vehicle entering Hollingsworth property. This is from the government game camera. There's just so much offensive about this story. I I, I mean, I, I just, I got to skip ahead to the end just to get through this. Um, the last two paragraphs or three paragraphs here, as, as for Rainwaters and Hollingsworth, the pair is in agreement. The marriage of privacy and pro property rights is currently neglected by SCOTUS, but state constitutions must protect the union. <coughs> um, this is funny. Currently neglected by SCOTUS. That's like saying a mugger is neglecting to give you your money back. Like, let's, let's be honest here. What is what is the point of all of this? So as uh, Rainwater, Rain, Rainwater describes it, I'm, quote, I'm forced to assume I'm being watched on my land right now. And it's an awful feeling, just like the worst feeling in the world. People hear the story and at first they can't believe it's happened. But I think the public should know about every detail of what their officials are doing in secret, let it all hang out for everyone to see. Hollingsworth echoes rainwater sentiments and adds punctuation, quote, I'm so glad the Institute for Justice has helped us. Otherwise, we never have the resources to fight. This whole deal has made me so paranoid. And I find myself constantly checking for cameras or listening devices. Are we still in America? They get to put up secret cameras on our land and get live photos of what we're doing. And that's protected by the Constitution. There's something fundamentally wrong with this whole picture. So yeah, reality check. If you thought the government in America are respected privacy rights, no, not even fucking close. There are a couple, excuse me, a couple important takeaways from the story. One, you have to assume that you're being watched at all times. Fucking sucks. I came to this acknowledgement and understanding years ago. And the change in my policy was was not really significant except assume that all of my digital communications everything that's on my phone my email video everything else that none of those are secure that that any of those can be uh intercepted at any time there's no there's the, the exception being end-to-end -end offline encryption with an air gap where you you know you put in way more effort than uh, than, than most people would in, into their, you know, security or privacy protection. And the other thing is you have to fight back every chance. Uh, just know that this is one of these major underlying issues of modern society and government. The basic respect for privacy and for property rights is, is absolutely critical to restoring freedom and anything we can do to, to celebrate the expectation of privacy to strengthen that uh, paradigm of expectation of privacy and to fight back against government violating our privacy, we have to take every opportunity available to us. Fighting the open fields doctrine is going to be an important front in the war on privacy.